untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer Colored Combo Control deck featuring Iluna, Apex of Wishes as her commander, the 5 mana 6 6 legendary beast elemental dinosaur, which can mutate for 6 mana, has flying and trample, and whenever this creature mutates, we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non land permanent card and put it straight onto the battlefield or into our hand. So Iluna doesn't have any mutate synergy in this deck, instead we're kind of cheating Omniscience into play as the only non-land permanent in our deck, so if we mutate Iluna by mutating onto one of the various creature tokens we can generate, we're guaranteed to find Omniscience, which is the 10 mana enchantment saying we can cast spells from our hand without paying their mana costs, so incredibly powerful in a deck that has a bunch of card draw, which this certainly does. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with some 1 mana spells, where we've got Brainstorm to draw 3, put 2 cards back, very powerful in combination with the various shuffle effects, like the various ramp cards that search for lands, or the fetch lands in the deck, so we can shuffle away unwanted cards, especially useful for putting Omniscience back into our deck, so we can still find it with Iluna. Then we also have Hard Evidence, which can make an O3 crap token, and we also get to investigate making a clue token, so this is a perfect target to mutate Iluna onto. Then wash away a new counterspell, perfect for countering opposing commanders for one mana, otherwise a three mana counterspell. Then Lightning Bolt as removal, and Abundant Harvest as a great cantrip, which can find lands or non-lands. Then at 2 mana we've got Callous Dismissal, which can bounce an opposing non-land permanent, and a mass 1, making a 1-1 one, one zombie army token, which we can then mutate onto. We've got Disdainful Stroke, Memory Lapse, Negate as counterspells, as well as the classic 2 mana double blue counterspell. Then Startle will give an opposing creature minus 2 minus 0 until end of turn, get to make a 2-2 two, two Decayed Zombie, and we get to draw a card, so yet another token we can mutate onto. A Braid can deal 3 damage or destroy an artifact. Fire Prophecy can deal 3 damage to a creature, and we can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, once again useful for putting Omniscience back if we happen to draw it. Emergent Sequence can ramp and generate a creature in the process, so we can mute it onto it. Explore and Growth Spiral can put extra lands in place, so useful for ramping as well as Into the North, which can find a snow land, which goes with our four snow-covered basics in each color. And then we've got some more card draw with Arcane Infusion, which we can flash back to find an instant or sorcery in the top four. And of course our deck is filled with instants and sorceries, as well as Expressive Iteration, which we typically want to cast on turn three, as another nice two for one. And then Shatter Skull Smashing can be a land or a removal spell. At 3 mana we've got Flip the Switch as another counter spell that leaves behind a decayed zombie token. Honor the God Pharaoh makes a zombie army token, lets us discard to draw 2, also useful once we have omniscience in play, so we can keep churning through the deck to find more action spells. Valakut Awakening can refresh our hand and potentially put omniscience back. Cultivate, Grow from the Ashes, and Path to the Festival, all excellent ramp spells, some of which we can use in multiple ways. And Spring to Mind can also be cast as a 3 mana ramp spell, and then later cast the Mind Half out of our graveyard to draw 2. We've got Beacon Bolt and Electrolyze as nice value removal spells, and Prismari Command has a ton of utility, including making a treasure to potentially help us ramp. And speaking of treasures, those are an excellent way to help us ramp into the mutate on Iluna, because while ramp spells are great, once we have omniscience in play we don't really have a use for ramp spells anymore, so we're better off including some of these card draw spells that also make treasures, like Pirate's Prize, which lets us draw to make a treasure, we've got Pirate's Pillage, which makes us discard to draw to and make two treasures, as well as Unexpected Windfall, which is the same at instant speed, so these are great for ramping into Iluna, but also very useful once we have an omniscience in play. Then we also have some classic 4 mana ramp spells, like Migration Path, which can also be cycled, and otherwise finds two basics to put into play tapped, and Vastwood Surge can also be kicked to put counters on all our creatures potentially. And then we also have a Verdant Mastery, which we usually cast for 4 mana, to help us put two lands in play, also helps the opponents out a little bit if we cast it for 4 mana, but still very useful as it guarantees our next land drop. Then Experimental Overload leaves behind a creature token and can get back an instant or sorcery from our graveyard. 
We've got Storm's Wrath as one of the many sweepers in the deck, dealing 4 to each creature and planeswalker. Mizzix Mastery, also very powerful in a deck filled with powerful instants and sorceries, as a way to get back one of them out of our graveyard and cast it, and we can overload it for 8 mana, in which case we can cast all spells out of our graveyard. And then at 5 we've got Time Warp to take an extra turn. Burn Down the House can deal 5 damage to each creature and planeswalker, or can generate some creature tokens to mutate onto. Hour of Devastation deals 5 to each creature and non-Bolas Planeswalker, also makes it so they lose indestructible, and Hour of Promise, another ramp card, can find 2 lands, and then if we control 3 or more deserts, we get to make a pair of 2-2 black zombie creature tokens, so we do have some deserts to support it. And then our curve toppers include Commit to Memory, can cast the Commit half as a bound spell or counter spell, and then Memory, very powerful, especially once we have Omniscience in play, to refresh our hand so we can keep comboing off. Then Boon of the Wishgiver can be cycled for 1 mana, or can be a 6 mana draw 4, excellent with Omniscience in play. We've got Commence the Endgame to draw 2, and then a Mass X to make a zombie army token, and this cannot be countered, so great to make a zombie token end of turn, untap, and then mutate onto it. We've got the Discovered Formula from Alchemy to seek three non-land cards and make all cards in our hand perpetually cheaper. We've got a River's Rebuke as a one-sided bound spell, Elrond's Epiphany to take an extra turn, potentially making some bird tokens in the process. We've got Overflowing Insight to draw seven, Seagate Restoration can be a land or a powerful card draw effect. We've got Star of Extinction as a very powerful sweeper, destroying a land in the process. Magma Opus can be discarded early to make a treasure to help us ramp, and later an 8 mana instant that does a lot of things, including making a creature token and drawing cards, and then of course our omniscience. And then a mana base mostly includes lots of mana fixing, couple basics to search up with our ramp spells, and the deserts to go with our promise. And then one utility land that's quite useful is Colony Garden to make an 0-1 plant token which we can then mutate onto, as well as the Slumber Mount which can be sacrificed to make a 4-4 Troll Warrior token and destroying a land in the process. And then plenty of mana fixing, couple fetch lands also useful to go with Brainstorm. So yeah, that's our Iluna combo deck. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Thassa Deep Dwelling, so a flicker deck. My hand's okay. Name blue. Got a few ways of making creature tokens, Storm's Wrath to reset the board. So probably fine to foretell Alrun's Epiphany. And then next turn I could Hard Evidence plus maybe crack the clue. Of course, opponent's playing blue, so can expect some counter spells. So it's not going to be straightforward to mutate Iluna. As for Toll's an interesting one. So they can put time counters on it and then cast spells for free, equal to the number of time counters, the mana value that is. Powerful in other formats with cards like Living End that has mana value of zero. Okay. In the meantime, my hand's not all that amazing. Is this one where we want to cycle Triome? It might be. Although I guess I also need double blue, so probably still worth playing. And then we've got Startle to draw a card, make another token. Also might be awkward if I want to Storm's Wrath as well. Opponent's going to pass with 4 mana up. So next turn I could technically mutate Iluna. But want to wait for them to tap out. Other opponent could try and leverage their ass foretold to keep up counterspell mana. Benthids resolves. And I think I startle here just to draw a card. Alright, counter spells important. So I think the plan now is going to be to wait until I can time warp and counterspell in the same turn, which I guess will require one more blue mana. 
before that works. Because if they counter the time warp, I can counter back. Take an extra turn, untap, epiphany, untap, mutate Iluna. Because their opponent can still cast counters in my turn as well. So, I think we'll have to be patient. And wait for them to make a wrong move, or... Perhaps uh, pick up that extra blue mana. Unexpected Windfall could come in handy. So I might cast that end of turn here. Opponent didn't do anything, so they're probably hanging on to a couple counter spells, is my guess. Take four. And the treasures from Windfall could help me cast more blue spells. Shark Typhoon. I think I let Resolve, but I might as well Windfall in response so they cannot get an extra shark if they counter this. Alright, that resolved. Shark Typhoon resolves. Get to untap. And then, let's see here, I was a starting player, so it enters tapped, good to know. But probably kick things off with Time Warp. That resolves, so this turn I can just develop my mana some more. Negate seems good to have. Make extra blue. And then now I can untap and go for the mutate or I can epiphany first. That resolves. Take another extra turn. And then now it's time to go for it. So we've got double counterspell backup. Brazen Borrower. We can negate. Find Omniscience. 34 cards remaining. And let's start drawing cards. And yeah, both of these are great. So I want to put Insight in Hands and Multiverse in Exile. Twenty-three cards left. Plenty of free counter spells available. So things are looking up. Okay, I think we should have enough tools to figure out a way to win here. Can brainstorm shuffle as well. I guess I can shuffle by ramping. Can still cast Behold. Follicle Awakening doesn't seem needed. Commence the endgame is pretty huge. Can play that now. Probably should have waited to play my land, but that's okay. If 
14 cards left. Could take a look at the Exile Pile to see what's gone. Mystic's Mastery sadly is, so I don't think I have another way to take an extra turn. But, um... Uh, can still attack for a bunch. Kill some creatures. Good Storm's Wrath after attacking. Sure. So... How about we attack first? Storm's Wrath. And bolts. And then I'll keep the Magma Opus at instant speed. And then I can mutate Iluna onto the zombie army to make a huge trampler. So we don't have to worry about any chum blockers. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Mangara, the Diplomat, and my hands. Okay. Got a few ways to ramp, make tokens to mutate onto. And then, uh, behold, the multiverse will be great with omniscience to keep digging. If we can pull it off. So, get the tap land out of the way. Self Savior Savior's fine. And maybe next turn we can Verdon Mastery, although I'll need an extra untap line for that work. Strict Proctor prevents ETB abilities. So I don't think Mutate uh, will be affected by it. So let's keep on ramping. Opponent can have a mountain. And hopefully next turn I get to mutate. Idyllic Tutor to search up an enchantment. Could find a hate card for our commander or who knows what else. But this seems like a good window to go for it and then yeah, hopefully Strict Proctor doesn't interfere, but it shouldn't. Alright, so let's mutate. Find our omniscience. Still 59 cards remaining, and now we can start comboing off. Behold, Overload, get back, Behold, and I want to keep all the card draw effects. Okay. I guess I still get to scry here, but our opponent has seen enough. Alright, that was essentially turn 4 kill. Not bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Edgar, so Vampire Tribal most likely. And unfortunately we drew the Omniscience. So I think this is probably a mulligan, since I'm probably not going to ramp to 10 mana with this hand, and don't have a way to put Omniscience back. This will have to do. Hopefully can scry into an extra land here with our Temple. And a Rockfall Veil will do. So turn two, I can abrade something, maybe cycle migration path. And then turn three, we can start ramping. Aetherborn, I'm happy to kill.
And I'll get an extra blue source here. And then flip the switch can be a way to make an extra creature token to then mutate onto. Although probably still gonna ramp with migration path. And then behold the multiverse, excellent, once we have an omniscience in play to start drawing extra cards. And there's Edgar. And then probably fine to pass. Want to keep Behold in hand so I can cast it with Omniscience. So yeah, we'll just pass and then I can flip the switch plus Arcane Infusion. Hopefully have our opponent tapped out. Vampire, I'll have to let resolve here. Now if our opponent doesn't play to flip the switch, we can always take a different approach. Alright, perfect, so counter that. And we want to find big expensive spells at this point. Luckily didn't draw the Omniscience. And there we go. Start by resetting the board. And our opponent has seen enough. Probably would have been able to close out the game here with Behold and Magma Opus drawing a ton more cards. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Dina, so Black Green, Live Gain, Sacrifice deck. My hand is missing blue mana. Do have a path to the festival and a scry land, so I can scry into a land, plus I guess Awakening can be a land as well. I guess I'll still try this. So ideally scry into a blue source early, if not, can still turn three path, get my island. And take it from there. Iteration will have to bottom. Different approaches to try and cast the Awakening, but this seems slightly safer. Trespasser's Curse. I don't think we care about too much. And get an island. And Overload will help us make a token to then mutate onto. Sedgemore Witch resolves Drew the Omniscience, which is a little awkward here. Now we could of course ramp into it. So do I want to flashback Path to the Festival? Or do I want to go Pillaging? Want to hang on to the Treasures to cast Omniscience? Sadly, played Awakening as a tap land, so don't have that available. Now yeah, let's flashback Path. Get another island. Get to scry spring to mind. So it's not bad, but I think we'd rather just draw an extra lands. Also still have a growth spiral available. So next run I could pillage spiral. Gets us pretty close to hard casting omniscience. Now a discard spell would be unfortunate. Still have commit memory to shuffle our graveyard back, but that would take quite a bit of setup. Since that's search for greatness and assign him blood to draw. So step one pillage. What do I discard? Negate maybe? Or I could negate to maybe counter discard spell. Or I could growth spiral first. See what else we draw. Boon I would like to hang on to. So at this point, maybe it's fine to get rid of Negate. It's definitely the greedy play here. 
but kind of want to hang on to all the other cards. So they've got a one turn window to maybe hit us with a discard spell. Can still play a lane since the other one came from Spiral. Alright, hopefully no discard and then should be able to combo off. Midnight Reaper's fine. Alright, so this is going to be Omniscience the Fairway. And I'll start by thinning out the deck. Get some more deserts since we already have one in play. Make some zombies. Draw four. Draw seven. Star of Extinction, a nice reset button. We've got Overload to get back Overflowing Insight. Draw another seven. And at some point we can maybe make a large token to help close out the game. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Surin, Vengeful Bloodlord. My hand's not particularly exciting, no ramp outside of making a treasure. Missing a way to make a creature token until we get to eight mana. So should be able to do better. And yeah, I guess this works. Just lots of counter spells early to buy time. And I'll play this one as it currently comes into play tapped. Turn to Spire Bluff. Keep up Negate and Memory Lapse. Probably want to hang on to Boon as a 6 mana draw for. And then I might Memory Lapse an aggressive 2 mana creature. Negate deals with Sorin. Now, nah, Orator, we can let slide. I was probably gonna lapse like a three powered creature. This I can still play tapped. So we're just trying to buy time until we find a way to make a creature token. Sign in blood. I guess I could negate. Nah, they can have it. Just want to keep my counter spells to prevent our opponent from impacting the board too much. Cultivate's nice, although it would be shields down on my counter spells, so I'll wait one more turn on casting it. And then now I could commit to be mana efficient. And taking two per turn is not a problem. Cleric, I probably want to send packing as that can grow pretty large. And then I guess I'll hang on to commit. So, opponent keeps the cleric on top, so they might replay it next turn, which I guess was a reason to still commit and then uh, have memory lapse for next turn. That's okay. Keep on ramping. Hopefully they go for Sorin. Nope, oh, replace Cleric. Can always commit it later. Storm's Wrath, also a nice solution here. C 
see Garda Splendor. Probably worth countering given that we can pressure their life total. And then I'll wait one more turn on Boon. Go for Vastwood Surge. Keep up commits. And then memory could also be an option. So they can send it back to the command zone if they want. Abundant harvests. I guess I'll start there, although if I boon four mana left, yeah, it's not like I'm gonna be able to mutate Iluna. All right, Magma Opus, can I cast it? I can. So, could cast it in their upkeep to tap two lands down. And then make it less likely that they can interact with the Mutate, or I could wait for them to maybe tap out. And then end of turn go Magma Opus, potentially tapping more lands down. And then extra Mutate and start comboing. Memory, I won't be able to cast for free, but I can cast it on the following turn by paying 6 mana. And if we draw omniscience, we can hard cast it, so... That resolves. Opponent can get their cleric back. And unless they have a fatal push here, we should be fine. They could float a mana and then kill the token afterwards, but they don't. Alright, perfect. Time to mutate. And plenty of card draw in hand here. Alright, our opponent has seen enough. That's often going to be the case when uh, comboing off here. Lots of opponents just concede as soon as you get an omissions in play, which, you know, is too bad, but often enough it's going to be game over, so it's understandable why they want to save time. Alright, so we got to see our Iluna deck in action, and it definitely belongs in the top tier of Brawl decks, so play it with the knowledge that your opponents aren't going to be too happy, and if you want to spice it up, you could always swap out Omniscience for a different permanent that you can find with Iluna. If you put in a creature, like maybe a Coma, you could also add Transmogrify to the deck as a way to turn any creature token into Coma. You could maybe spice things up by adding multiple permanents that you can find with Iluna, which also decreases the chances of milling out if your Omniscience is at the bottom of your library. So definitely a lot of customization available, but overall a very powerful concept for a deck. So that'll do it for today's game. Gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.